now we've upgraded to modern laboratories. But what we did was we trawled through what we call the ethnobotanical data. What that means, these are the traditional herbal wisdom of different nations, which is considerable. A lot of modern pharmaceutical technology, even today, derives from old herbal medicine. And a lot of that old stuff, when looked at with new scientific technology and with our new understanding of phytochemistry, the chemistry of plants, looks very, very good indeed. So what we are doing is taking the very best of the old, mixing it with the very best of the new to bring you something that is natural, traditional, safe, and surprisingly effective. Now, let's see how smart all you guys are. Any of you recognize this? If you do, put your hands up. I'm going to call you out, too. Fennel, did you cheat? Did you know I was going to show this? Did you see my slides beforehand? Leave the hall. These are fennel seeds, in which case the second slide is redundant. I thought none of you would get it. I was going to make it a little easier for you. I thought I'd show you a fennel flower. And they all come from this plant. And fennel is a phytochemical treasure house. It contains a lot of different compounds, which, you know, our great, 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 great grandparents didn't know about. They just knew it worked. Now we know a little bit more about what was on inside a plant like that. And it contains chemicals like these. They're known as transanethanol, estrogol, limonene, fenchone. I mean, that's just the first four. There's about 20 different compounds, all of which have different biological activities. And from our perspective, perhaps the most important part of this story is that these compounds are very good at relaxing smooth muscle, which means when you take this herb, this herbal extract, it opens the airways. You can breathe a little more easily. It relaxes the smooth muscles of the gut. So that feeling of tension, the churning, that tightness, it melts away. And it's really very effective. Nice little paper there, published last year, highly effective pain relief. They're talking about colicky pain, caused by the smooth muscle being too active. This is a very, very effective therapeutic tool. Unlike all other effective medicines, or herbal medicines, or drugs, they all have side effects, all of them. But what you quickly learn when you're dealing with natural products is very often, not always, but very often, the side effects, unlike the ones we see with pharmaceutical products, are positive. And so we find from other researchers that these compounds also protect the liver and they improve blood flow. These are nice side effects. They're highly positive. This is an easier one. Now, for all of you amateur or perhaps professional botanists out there, not you, does anybody recognize this one? Come on, this is easy. What do you say? Margarita. <laughs> you mean... No, no, not that kind of margarita, okay. <laughs> okay. A lot of people think it's a daisy. They're the same family. It's in English what we would call chamomile. And chamomile is one of those old, old traditional remedies. You find it in the folk wisdom of many European countries. And it's been recognized by one of the best global resources that we have. This is the uh, German monograph systems, which recognizes chamomile as something that is effective in treating anxiety, reducing anxiety, and subjective stress. That's the old-fashioned, the green book on the left, and you can see on the right it's been integrated into a mobile app. So you can download all this information for yourselves. Just go onto the site, and it's there for you. Another question for you. Any takers? Anyone know what this is? Anyone? <laughs> okay. Okay, this is lemon balm. 
And that was Lemon Bomb. That was the easy one. You recognize this one? Okay. What I'm now going to talk about is a little bit of biochemistry. And the point about the combining Lemon Bomb with chamomile is what we know. They both act on chemistry in the brain involving the neurotransmitter GABA. And what this diagram shows, and I just wanted to bring it up to show you the complexity, a fraction of the complexity of what goes on inside your brains. There is a kind of opposing balance between two neurotransmitters, one is called GABA, one is called glutamate, and broadly speaking, glutamate is excitatory, tends to wake you up, GABA tends to calm things down and help you to get to sleep. And without going into too much detail, chamomile works in one way, and lemon balm works in a slightly different way, in a complementary, overlapping mechanism, which between them upregulate the GABA chemistry and downregulate the glutamate chemistry. And they move the pendulum away from being overly anxious and overly aroused towards tranquility and the beginnings of sleep. So here's another nice example where we can see that the wisdom of our ancestors was real. And now we can quantify it. And now we can see exactly how it works. It's all been recognized and printed, very reasonable paper. It's all spelt out. And we can justify and explain exactly how these products work and what they do and what you can expect. Okay, here's a slightly different kind of floral arrangement. Now these look a little bit like flowers, but they're not. This is a different molecule called inositol. And inositol has several names. It used to be considered to be a, v, a B vitamin. It's also known as meat sugar because it's found in high concentrations in muscle. But it also plays a very, very important role in the brain. And one of its functions is to do with the transportation of glucose and in the brain, the formation of another neurotransmitter called serotonin. The serotonin is a neurotransmitter which is all about happiness and contentment. And inositol helps us to increase levels of serotonin in the brain. There is evidence which shows that it can do that. And if that looks a little unfamiliar, here is a close-up of the same molecule. Now you probably recognize it. Inositol hexaphosphate, your best friend? Mine too. Mine too, my favorite. So that's another of the ingredients in REST. And we have combined it with a last mystery ingredient. Just a sprinkling of rough cut diamonds. Does anybody recognize these? Do you know what they are? Come on, come on, come on. Don't waste my time here. What are they? You've all eaten it. It's sugar. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Which comes from sugar cane. And so there is just a little sprinkling of cane sugar in rest because that works together with the inositol in order to increase levels of serotonin. So, let's recap. You've got your chamomile which is relaxing all the smooth muscle in your chest and in your abdomen. You have got the lemon balm. You've got the GABA chemistry. You're switching off the glutamate, increasing the serotonin. It's a feel-good product. This is a product which will help you to unknit the raveled sleeves of care, as Shakespeare puts it so that you can get to sleep just that little bit easier. Now, what we've done is a small study, only a small-scale study, just a pilot study, of the effects of this. The effects are highly positive. We know that people can get to sleep more easily. The latency period, as we refer to it, is shortened. They enjoy a better quality of sleep. And the overall length of sleep, all of these parameters are improved. You feel better when you wake up. It's easier to get to sleep. You sleep better. When you wake up, you feel better. As a scientist, I'd be the first to admit to you, it is only a pilot 